On that third day, um, I was so happy to see my baby. Um, my sons were at school, at preschool, and um, my husband brought my daughter to me. And it was really hard because I hadn't seen any of them since the night before the surgery. And I didn't remember, I could not remember um, the whole day before the surgery. And when my husband brought my daughter, she, it felt like, like she didn't recognize me or something. She just, um, I think I just probably looked really scary. And she was not wanting me to hold her and it just, it broke my heart. But um, she, she was, she, I, I just think she didn't really know what to feel. Um, you know, I was connected to all these things. I hadn't eaten in two days. I was throwing up and just probably not looking like my usual self, so I don't blame her. So I'm gonna have to turn this into two videos because it's just gonna be too long. So. Make sure you guys go and watch um, the first part, that way you kind of understand what I'm talking about here. But, um, let's see. Um, on that third day in the hospital, um, I finally got to go home. And all day that day, um, I kept telling my nurse how I was concerned. Um, I had some areas that were bruised really badly, but there was one area that was concerning me where it was turning extremely dark. And I told her this throughout the day. And when she came in to start processing like the discharge and the paperwork and everything that they have you fill out. Um, I asked her if she had asked my doctor about the concerns that I had and her response was the doctor came in in the morning and she checked everything out. She said that she wasn't concerned so you'll be fine. You're going to be able to go home now. So I did just that. My husband came and got me. It was around 5 or 6 p.m. and we came home and that night I was in a lot of pain but on top of that pain um, it was it was strange it was like a like a tingly feeling that I had and it was like like pins and needles almost like when something's going numb and I started to notice that I had certain areas that were completely numb. So I got extremely worried and the areas that were looking more purple and dark in the hospital were turning black. And I, I am not a nurse, I'm not a doctor, but I know if part of your body is turning black, then there's something wrong there. When I noticed that I was feeling numbness. I called my husband into the room and I asked him to check it out and look at what was going on. And he told me that I was bleeding. Um, I was pinching myself to try to see if I could feel anything. And because my skin was so thin from the swelling and that I had total numbness. Um, I pinched myself so hard that I started bleeding. Um, so right away I was worried, um, but it was already 11.30 at night and we didn't have anybody to help us with our kids so we decided to wait until the next morning to go and see the doctor um, just to make sure
sure that everything was okay. So the next morning comes around when I woke up, I called the doctor and I told them what was going on and they said that the doctor wanted me to go in to see them right away. So we went in and right away they just put me into a room and the doctor saw me immediately and she said that I had a hematoma. So right in that moment, she had the nurses come in and they brought a tray and she just cut it open right then and there um, because she said that she needed to relieve the pressure. So from my understanding, a hematoma is like a blood clot that happens, but internally. Um, we still don't know what exactly caused it, but Basically, it could have been that some one of the veins that she had to cauterize or stitch closed from the surgery um, had burst back open. She also said that it could have been all of the medications that I was on after the surgery. Um, we don't really know. It's just like a surgical complication that can happen sometimes. So... At the doctor's office, she started cutting open and um, relieving some of that blood right then and there, but she said that we were just going to have to go back into surgery. So um, she had me go over to the hospital right away from her office and go into the outpatient area again. Um, and that day because they had discharged me and already gone through all the paperwork, um, we had to try to get an approval from my insurance and it was just this big huge mess. I ended up going into the hospital at around 10 a.m. and it was I think 3 p.m. before they had even processed my papers. and. I was just laying there waiting for the surgery. I was in so much pain because I hadn't taken anything since the morning. And I get that the hospital's a business, but I, they, they couldn't even give me ice to put down there for the pain that I was in. I wasn't allowed to leave to go and get my pain medication, but then they couldn't administer any pain medication because I wasn't technically a patient yet since the insurance hadn't approved it yet. And I finally um, was waiting there and I called and I, I called to the hospital on the phone while I was in the hospital. And I got onto the phone with the supervisor of the financial department, I think is what it was. And she came to see me in the hospital bed that I was in and I told her, I was like, I don't know what's going on, but if you guys need for me to put the payment in right now so that I can get my pain medication, then just bring me, somebody bring me a system so I can scan it right here or you can take my card and go charge my card, but I need my pain medication, I am in so much pain right now. Um, I started crying, I was so emotional, and I told her about the nurse that I had explained to the night before that I was concerned about this, and apparently she did not tell my doctor. So I was so frustrated because I shouldn't have been discharged in the first place. I would have already had been admitted to the hospital and they could have taken care of the surgery then. Um, within five minutes after speaking to her, then I was cleared for surgery. So I'm not sure what they did or what they had to do to get the approval, but I was finally able to get on my pain medication again. Um, at 5 p.m. is when they did the second surgery and this one was really hard because I had to go in alone 
And at this point I was so um, nervous and scared because of what I had just gone through. And to be, you know, rushed back into surgery, I was extremely scared about going in. And the only thing that I could do was pray. And um, right before the surgery, my husband's cousin had contacted us and she, she lives about an hour away from where I was in the hospital. Um, and I told her, you know, that Jason wasn't going to be able to be there because he has to take care of the kids. So she, she drove all the way over for me um, so that I wouldn't have to wake up alone. And again, the surgery ended up taking two hours. Um, everything went much better with the surgery though. I remember as soon as they gave me my phone back, the first thing I did was call him and he just said, it's so good to hear your voice. It was about two to three hours again for the surgery. And when they brought me out to my post-op room, his cousin was there and it, I just felt so much better. I didn't have to be alone anymore. I was immediately feeling much better after the surgery. I did not have the same amount of pain that I did after the first time. Um, they did give me the fentanyl again, but this time they gave me a lower dose and they did not have to put me on Xanax. Um, and I only had to stay for one day. The next morning, the doctor came in to visit me, and this is when she told me about what happened with the second surgery. Um, so because of the, the backed up blood that I had, the hematoma, the doctor had to leave an open incision. So basically with the type of surgery that I had, they have to cut you all the way from down at the bottom all the way up to the top. And she had to leave a good portion of that open. So I had about, it's about maybe like an inch or more um, gap of an open wound that we have to pack every single day, three times a day. Um, it's very painful and frustrating. I have to have my husband pack it three times a day right now. I have to do a sits bath, like what they have you do after labor, three times a day. I'm taking antibiotics, um, ice packs, medication, and it's just been so tough. I started doing some research about the area that she found the mass in, and I'm just worried about it being cancer. I hope that this video doesn't come off like I'm complaining because I try really hard to be very positive and I, I don't personally like when people complain about things but it has just been so hard. I never could have imagined that a procedure like this that was supposed to be so simple, outpatient, 30 minutes, gone the same day, would turn into two surgeries and five days in the hospital and months of recovery time. The hardest part has been not being able to be with my kids right now.
I didn't see my kids for a whole week and I can't even hold my baby right now, which is so difficult. I had talked about this before, but we were already having um, trouble with breastfeeding and I had just stopped breastfeeding her and I just keep thinking, thank God that she was already fully transitioned to formula. And as much as it broke my heart when I couldn't produce milk for her anymore, um, I think this was the reason why. I can't imagine um, going from breastfeeding to not at all because I would not have been able to feed her in the hospital. And poor thing, she would have been suffering. So, you know, they say God works in mysterious ways and I did not understand why I could not produce milk for my daughter this time. I breastfed my older two kids and it was so hard for me. I, I didn't want to talk about it very much because it, I know it's not a big deal and people choose to do formula and that's totally okay, but my plan for my baby, especially this one, being our last baby, I wanted to breastfeed her, but thank God that I wasn't because my husband was able to take care of her. She was okay and I'm just so grateful that everything turned out okay and I'm still here. I'm not sure when I'll be posting another video, so you guys can always reach out to me there. I love getting messages and comments from you guys. It means a lot to me. I hope that you guys will stick around and bear with me during this time. Um, I don't know how many videos I'll be posting, and if I do, they're probably going to be out of this bed because I can't really get up right now. So I will keep you updated um, when we get the lab results back and thank you for your love and support. It means so much to me right now.